Welcome back, Love Nation. This is Nina. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you to everybody that has been coming to my channel. Like this video, share this video, and hit that notification bell so you know when I drop my next one. We are going to get into part three of the civil lawsuit documents which Cassie filed against Diddy. Now, there's a lot to go over. We are going to get through this. I am not feeling well. But I did my best, <clears throat> excuse me, to get through these documents. We are going to do a part four. So please hit that like and share all button so you know when I drop my next one. Hopefully tomorrow, if my throat does not go completely out, these documents are disturbing. Trigger warning. There's a lot of graphic nature in here. We're going to get into the FOs, which did he make Cassie do? I'm going to get into that now. Trigger warning. All right, let's just start this. To instruct his assistant to purchase excessive amounts of gifts for Cassie, which were delivered to the hotel room where she remained trapped. Cassie was terrified isolated and unable to see a pathway out of Diddy's hold on her life. She found herself becoming numb to what was going on she was experiencing and became entirely beholden to Diddy's commands. She began to blindly follow his instructions out of fear of again being on the receiving end of a horrible cycle of being pawed by him. By Diddy's own admission, his relationship with Cassie was like Bobby and Whitney, a clear acknowledgement of the unequal power dynamic and excessive DV that permeated their relationship. From the outside looking in, Cassie had heard others refer to her relationship with Diddy as akin to Ike and Tina. Her volatile and out of control partner, who also owned her label and therefore held her future success in his hands, had fully exerted control over every single aspect of her life. Chapter 5. Diddy forces Cassie into S.T. Within a few months of beginning a romantic relationship with 40-year-old Diddy, the 22-year-old Cassie felt beholden to his whims and demands. While in New York City, Diddy told Cassie that he had wanted to engage in a fantasy of his called voyeurism. Diddy said that it would turn him on if he saw Cassie with another man's eggplant. The first time Diddy hired a man and brought the man to his home in LA, the man Diddy and Cassie wore masquerade masks and ingested pharmaceuticals. Diddy directed Cassie to perform all kinds of acts with this man. While Diddy watched them, he gratuitous, gratuitously touched himself. While he directed Cassie and the man to do specific acts, the entire encounter lasted multiple days. Diddy began to call the arrangement a freak-off or F.O. And that's very important because we will be calling these things F on throughout the document from now on. He would repeatedly tell Cassie at random moments that he wanted an F.O. And Cassie was eventually expected to facilitate the location and the hiring of the male workers. At certain points during during this, Cassie and Diddy's relationship 
He would insist on a frequent F.O. Diddy would repeatedly tell Cassie that this practice was our thing and our secret. F.O.s would often take place in hotel suites, including at the Trump International Hotel in Columbus Circle, La Meritish, excuse me if I'm saying that incorrectly, Beverly Hills, the London Hotel in L.A., the Intercontinental Century City, the Intercontinental Atlanta, the Intercontinental New York City, the One Hotel in New York, and in Miami, the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in New York, and in Miami, the Fountain Blue in Miami, the Beverly Hills Hotel, and Shutters on the Beach in L.A. On one, on one occasion around 2013, Diddy had an F.O. set up at the Intercontinental Hotel in New York City, after which he was charged with tens of thousands of dollars in damages by the hotel. Excuse me, let me take a sip of water. Upon information and belief, Diddy's chief of staff, Tony Fletcher, paid the invoice charged by the hotel. Cassie was eventually instructed to use websites and special services to find male workers to participate in the FOs. Mr. Combs, who was Diddy, told Cassie to search for large black eggplants on the website. Sometimes Diddy would pay to fly male workers to his location, including to multiple cities in the United States as well as abroad. He required Cassie and his staff to help him make these arrangements. Diddy's assistants would help set up the FOs, including by setting up hotel suites with baby oil and Astroglide. Mr. Combs always supplied Cassie and the male workers with copious amounts of pharmaceuticals before and during the FOs. Cassie was given X, Coca-Cola, GHB, disassociates during these horrible encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after FOs to recover from the excessive substances pushed upon her. Cassie was required to dress up in lingerie for FOs, and Diddy insisted she wear white nail polish to contrast her nails with the skin of black men he hired to do things with her. This is so terrible, you guys. <clears throat> During the FO, Diddy would instruct Cassie to pour excessive amounts of oil over herself. Mr. Combs would then instruct Cassie and the male workers to speak to each other and then would specifically tell Cassie where to put her hands on the workers. Diddy would say things like, grab that big eggplant and ask her how does it feel as he directed her to perform for him. During the FOs, in addition to directing Cassie and touching himself, Diddy would use his phone, laptop, and tablet to film Cassie doing things with this hired male workers. He treated the forced encounter as a personal art project adjusting the candles he used for lighting to frame the videos he took. While Cassie quickly deleted any photographs or videos of the acts, if they were taken on her phone, Diddy repeatedly made it clear that he retained many videos of Cassie during their FOs. Even when she deleted the videos, Diddy would tell Cassie, that he was able to recover deleted videos from her devices. On one occasion, he sat next to her on a flight 
and made her watch a video she thought had been deleted, reinforcing her inability to escape the immense power he held over her. Diddy would pay the male workers a few thousand dollars in cash for their services. During some FOs, Diddy would become extremely intoxicated and would hit Cassie in front of the male workers. Cassie was repulsed by Diddy's demands, but between a physical pawing, paw pawing, and recognizing his incredible power and incredible temper, Cassie became petrified of her partner and boss and felt that she could not say no. Even when he would present her with lavish gifts prior to or in the middle of FOs, seemingly acknowledging the way in which these force encounters constituted work for Cassie and that he needed to comp compensate her for this work. At one point, he had given her so many designer bracelets for FOs and immediately following his brutal things that he did to her that she felt that she was shackled by his presence. Frequently, her anxiety of an FO would become so great that she would become physically ill, sometimes to the point of vomiting, while kneeling over a toilet. Diddy would shame her into performing for him, eventually forcing her to get up and proceed with the encounter. She knew firsthand that telling Diddy that she did not want to engage in FOs was met with anger and him reaching out to her and him putting hands on her physically. In addition, any suggestion that Cassie would refuse the FO or otherwise repeat Diddy's or otherwise report Diddy's putting hands on her was met with ultimatums by him who would say that Cassie could not go to the police because she had a lot to lose. In around August of 2015, for example, in the middle of the surprise birthday dinner for Cassie's 29th birthday, Mr. Combs insisted that Cassie leave the party and go to a hotel for an F.O. When she expressed that she did not want to go, Diddy had Cassie cornered by his security staff in order to force her to leave with him. After this F.O., Diddy and Cassie went back to the hotel room that Cassie was staying in, where some of Cassie's friends were already hanging out. Diddy was severely intoxicated and at one point during the night, picked up one of Cassie's friends like a child and dangled that friend over the 17th floor of the balcony suite. Cassie and her friends were scared by Diddy's erratic behavior. But Cassie was heavily sedated <clears throat> because of the pharmaceutical she took to participate in the F.O. And therefore was unable to respond to Diddy's terrifying behavior. I am going to leave you guys on this paragraph. We're going to come back and continue this. There is actually much more. We're only halfway through this horrendous reading. I have um, a sore throat coming on, but I want to get this information out. This is truly, truly disturbing. I will be trying to come back tomorrow. Excuse me for my throat. We're going to come back and finish this document. We're going to read more of this tomorrow. Like, share, subscribe. Till next time, be safe. Bye, guys.